Oh, it's mock draft time, baby, and today we are sharing a team so that you can watch how the three of us think about roster construction. You will enjoy it. Also, we've got a name change in the NFL that is astounding. Like the video, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back for Tuesday, June 14th. Mock draft episode today. So happy to be with you, Foot Clan. Out here in Arizona, it is that time. It is that time of year where I turned on the cold. It's hot. I turned the cold on in the shower. The cold mm. water was, was setting it too hot? was too hot to shower in. Yeah, because <laughs> the water has to come from somewhere and it comes from the ground right which is super hot super hot right like it, everything is heated here uh this is the time of year i start to melt um <laughs> and uh i yeah. find that if i walk too slowly to the vehicle that my shoes leave some behind on the <laughs> ground it is the time where like you have when, when you have the shower it's the battle of do you want any actual shower pressure <laughs> or do you want water that's not scalding hot? No, that is exactly right. Yeah. You turn I, it on and you just you just turn it as small <laughs> on as it can possibly go. I, it was just dripping out. That was exactly my shower this morning. <laughs> it was that decision. A lot of people don't know Arizona is one of the largest volcanoes in the world. Yeah, Active. that's a, that's a hidden fact. But it is <laughs> a, a fact. A hidden fact. That's right. <laughs> uh, but yes, it's hot. It's uh, really my not wife very I, hidden if you come here. You My wife was, uh, we were talking yesterday, like, I don't know if you know this, it's getting hotter, it seems. You know, we're in a bit of a hot spell <laughs> last few years. We agreed that if, if 125, 130 becomes anywhere near the normal, we are departing immediately. I am so happy to hear that. So, we so we're moving be... next year. Right. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Nice. Mock draft episode today, some NFL news to talk about, some mailbag if we have time. A reminder... UltimateDraftKit.com. It's available right now. You can go check it out. You can get in there. You can get the app. You can browse hundreds of player profile videos, all of our rankings, projections, tools, lots of stuff to get you primed and ready. I mean, we are, I, I said this yesterday, under 100 days until the NFL season is here. Very excited about that. Check that out, UltimateDraftKit.com. We have a giveaway going right now, a couple classic autographed jerseys of Michael Vick and Odell Beckham. That's at footclangiveaway.com. So here's the quick question. This one's kind of funny. It came from Twitter. John wants to know if the three of us are co-managing a team together, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Which and we're kind of doing on the mock draft episode today. That is fair, yes. Uh, and we each – he wants to know if we have to take one role for this fantasy team that we would manage. Who drafts? Who handles trades? And who sets the weekly lineups? I saw this earlier, and this was the easiest question I've ever seen, but I'm curious if it's the same for others or not. If I imagine you're starts. having me trade. Yeah. I, I figure we're all in agreement that Andy's doing the trades. 100%. Because he's the one that pulls at least one trade per season where we don't, we don't know what's going to happen. All of a sudden, you just see out of the corner of your eye Andy cackling which is followed up by quick, an email alert or a, a sleeper <laughs> notification. And we're like, oh, no. Which is you followed up by a bunch of groaning, unhappy yes. uh, men who are babies. Mm -hmm. And you, we mm -hmm. cannot mm -hmm. believe what lopsided trade Andy which, has just pulled. Which is it's followed, once a year. Which is followed by me trying to tell you that he offered it or <laughs> yes. it wasn't me it wasn't anything to it do with me it happens every year but also in addition <laughs> the other reason why you're going to handle trades is not only do you have that one ludicrous trade a year but you also have one trade per every 4 or 5 hours because your <laughs> shotgun approach to trading is unbelievable i feel it's, like i've calmed down in my old age 
<laughs> a little bit. I just feel like you have one hour a day that is dedicated time you spend to trying to manufacture trades. I'm a good multitasker, Jason. It's incredible. So, but the real question is, I don't, I mean, who who drafts and who handles the weekly lineups? I, my vote here would be Jason drafting, Mike setting that's, weekly lineups. That's where I was going to go to. With, Jason's uh, a little OCD about even the, the smallest mock draft. So I feel like the thoroughness level, like. That's the exact way I was going to go. We often manage teams together. And usually Mike is the one setting our lineup, or at least he's he's the first one with his eyes on it, making sure our lineup is set every week. So that's Andy. So this really is just yeah, yep. championship. Here we come. Yeah, there we go. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. <laughs> the Rams have signed wide receiver Cooper Cup. To a three-year extension through 2026, it's now essentially, because it's an extension, it's a five-year deal, $110 million. I mean, he deserves it. Oh, and absolutely. The, the Rams have infinite money. They know how to manage the cap. Was that was it Andrew Brandt? Yes. Andrew Brandt was, was on, on the, uh, the Pat McAfee show kind of illustrating why, because people are confused. Like, why yes. did the Rams just keep getting to sign massive $100 million deals, pay non-quarterbacks like quarterbacks, and somehow no other team can do this. And it's really, he explained very, uh, very well the fact that when you're front-loading cash and spreading out the cap hit on years, owners that have the cash and are fine writing $60 million checks for like, hey, this is how much you get paid when you cash it, um, you you can really take advantage of pretty much a, a cap loophole and you kick the can down the road, but it never truly comes to bear. It I really, mean, really doesn't. Yeah, because you got voidable years at the end. They signed Allen Robinson to almost a $50 million deal. They signed Bobby Wagner to almost a $50, mil, or to a $50 million deal. Aaron Donald just became the highest paid defensive player in history. Yeah, they bring back Cooper Cup. Now, they did trade away Robert Woods and whatever cap hit that was. But how bad do you have to be to not get paid by the Rams, huh, Robert? Matthew Stafford got extended too. Yeah, it's. I mean, you win a Super Bowl, it's it's a fun party to pay everyone. They they, uh, they gave him one hundred sixty million dollars, Matthew Stafford, that saved them ten million on the cap. Oh, um, so but the Cardinals, Cardinals did nothing. Need an influx of cash, oh, please, please, please stop. Please cash stop. over cap uh, is king. But uh, real congratulations, to Cooper Cup. I, he deserves yeah. it as a player. And he is a uh, big fan of the Spitballers podcast. Yeah, he's not really into f the footballers. No, he doesn't listen to this show, but he listens to our other show. And, and so you know he is very intelligent. <laughs> that's that's the real marker of the Spitballers podcast. Yeah, his intelligence. Uh, Dan Campbell said that he doesn't see Jamison Williams being ready for the start of training camp. Uh, a video came out of their war room during the draft where they were hoping for Jamison Williams to drop to them. The, the Saints traded ahead of them. They were worried. Then they... They basically had the conversation we had on the show, which was what team can afford to have Jamison Williams get healthy? The Saints weren't that team. They want to compete. The Lions are definitely that team. Jamison Williams will have a huge role. I think that's even more emphatically noted with this video with how excited they were to get him, but it will come over time as he gets healthy. Yeah, the, the, the excitement they had for their guy was evident in that video, but the other telling thing that really matches – the the specific words that Dan Campbell talked about with regards to Jamison Williams legs and, and him needing to get healthier and strengthen up leads me to believe that like I, I, I could easily see him starting on the pup even if he's really close just because they have a plan to take their time with Jamison Williams yeah and then for fantasy purposes especially you know in the redraft league that's a really tough draft pick like no matter even if you said hey I, Jason, today I'm going to tell you. I'm going to make you a promise. Jameson Williams, week nine on, he'll be relevant. How do you put a guy that you don't know for sure you on your bench for eight weeks? I mean, that's not. I'd rather I'd rather take Hopkins. Oh, like certain, certainly, yeah. Because I mean, know I guess it, Hopkins Jameson, will be fantasy relevant immediately. Yeah, Jameson. At least you have the luxury of of uh, you can throw him on an IR spot. Like that's a. A strategy that we talk about 
a lot in draft season is make sure you remember, like, because Jamison Williams will be, you know, very low. It, it, should we get the information? He's going to miss six weeks. Season-long rankings, he'll plummet. But if you can get him in the double-digit rounds and then just stash yes. him on one of your IR spots, that's that's still a pretty savvy move. But if you can't stash him there and he's on an active bench spot, then no thanks. I'm not interested. But I, be ready on the waiver wire because this is a lot sure. like what OBJ was like his rookie year. He was injured. He didn't get drafted. And then the back half of the year was on fire. I've had a really hard time deciding when, I, when I'm playing underdog best ball drafts. I have a hard time deciding when I want to take that shot because I think he's going to miss, you know, maybe the, the first six weeks. But when he comes, he's a perfect best ball player. You know, he, he, you're telling me he doesn't get some oh, seventy yeah. yard touchdown bomb and and have a, a top high end week, and he's very obviously very very lowly drafted right now because of the injuries and the unknowns. So um, that's still TBD. Tom Brady, this one's for Mike. Tom Brady said that Russell Gage will play a very important role in yeah. Tampa Bay's offense. It's it's interesting to me, man. Like Russell Gage, um, like he, I don't think that Russell Gage is a bad player. He had some success there at the end of the year. You know, I believe, at like essentially the end of the season was out targeting Kyle Pitts, and Tom Brady called him personally and of trying to recruit him to Tampa Bay. The unknowns of Chris Godwin's uh, ACL recovery. When is when is Godwin actually ready? You know we. He could be there at the beginning of the season. He could be popped where he misses six weeks. So Russell Gage right now uh, looking at, you know, wide receiver 43 and ADP playing with the GOAT. Like he's he's extremely interesting to me as a flyer. Certainly and the, the cost, like you said, I mean, you know, it's not going to be a lot for Russell Gage. Any other news, Brooksy? No, sir. Any other deucers wanting to drop anything? Oh, 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 no. no. I see no, what no, you no, did no, no, there. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a no. Plop. Uh, we are moving on to a mock draft. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. <laughs> and you did it again. Was it better, though? Was It, it was less, a little bit better. Less gurgly, more roar? Yeah, yeah less yeah. gurgly. Okay, good. I'm I'm working on it. We'll you know stay tuned till next time. Uh, today we are, like you said, we're sharing a team. We're going to because I want to argue with you frequently. So today we will be making picks together, sharing one team, drafting from the five spot. It's a twelve team half PPR, one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, four bench. Uh, if you are listening to the show and you want to see. The draft board, you can go to YouTube. You can check that out, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers, and view the draft board. Uh, leave a comment. Tell us, you know, you should have gone with Andy's pick on that selection, but I don't know why you went with Mike's, stuff like that. So we're going to kick it off. Like I said, we're drafting from the five spot. Let's do it. Christian McCaffrey goes off the board at 101 again. Jonathan Taylor at 102. Derrick Henry at 103, and Dalvin Cook at 104. So we are on the clock at 105. This is called the Do You Glance in Cooper <laughs> Cup area of the draft. Yep. And so this seems, talk to me. This seems pretty standard for the majority of leagues to kind of go with those four running backs up front. I would say that the next running back you would expect to come off the board would be Austin Eckler. Um, or possibly Alvin Kamara. Those two guys are uh, usually in this spot. So you're comparing someone like Austin Eckler, who was awesome last year, should be good again this year, doesn't really have any um, high competition um, from what he did last year. And then you're looking at, at wide receiver. All three of us are in on Cooper Cup as the, as the one. So I don't think that when you're talking about Eckler and Cup that you're really looking at uh, tight end this is too early quarterbacks not even in consideration obviously so it's really to me Austin Eckler or Cooper Cup and I that's think, an easy answer yeah yeah and I think uh well I, I, it's so easy that I don't know what you're gonna say uh <laughs> Najee Harris will be in the mix for people I think in in a lot of drafts as well um not for the ballers not for the ballers but Mike yeah. it's so easy for Jason is it easy for you no not at all um it's it's very difficult to repeat, especially when you have a historic season like Cooper Cup had. But it 
like, even if he doesn't repeat, he should still. I mean, he's easily in the mix to be a top three wide receiver and pay off as the overall number one guy drafted. But if Eckler, if he repeats, I mean, he's a he's a difference maker at a very hard position to fill, and. But I don't know if he can repeat. Like, he had so many touchdowns. He had 20 touchdowns. That, I mean, all like, in the red zone. If he repeats 20 touchdowns... Yeah, I just don't see that happening. I will pay both of you $100 cash. And this is a one-sided bet. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah accept it. You, oh, you, uh, yeah, yeah, accept no, it. Accept Mike it. did not... Accept, you didn't say <laughs> You said both. It's, it's, it's said, dibs. It's a dibs thing. <laughs> you, but you said you pay us both. both. So oh, Andy okay. can right. accept for both. Okay, deal. All right. Yes. Um, so then you're going Cooper Cup. I would go Cooper Cup here, yes. I believe in the last mock draft, Andy took Cooper Cup even ahead of this spot, and I don't blame him for that. Cooper Cup could lose 500 yards off of his last year's season and basically be the number one wide receiver. So they paid him. He's fantastic, and I think that he is a true elite tier one difference maker, and at the five spot, that's what I'm looking for. Now, we took Cooper Cup, Mike. Uh, I yeah, made the fine. pick. Uh, I was leaning the Eckler side. Both guys, like you said, historic seasons that may, may change, but uh, we went with Cooper Cup. Eckler went next, and then Najee Harris at 107, followed by three wide receivers in a row, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and Stephon Diggs uh, at 108, 109, and 110. Then Joe Mixon at 111. Uh, Joe Mixon is like just always around there and, and always kind of like, okay, like, I, I don't know how many people are, like, dying to select Joe Mixon. But, you know, the proof is in what he did last year on the field. Devontae Adams at 112. Travis Kelsey at 201. Tyreek Hill, former teammate, now with Miami at 202. DeAndre Swift, Debo Samuel, Nick Chubb, Josh Allen at 206. And my goodness, Alvin Kamara almost made it all the way back. Alvin Kamara... At two oh seven, we were one pick away from him. Jason, was that your uh, why you were reacting the way you were? I was reacting the way I was. Yeah, Camara, not just specifically. It was a tri pack of Camara, Joe Mixon, and DeAndre Swift. The hope, the prayer that one of them could uh, get to the two oh eight, where I think we would be off to a phenomenal start with Cooper Cup and one of those three players. But with Camara, Chubb, Swift, Mixon, Najee, and Eckler gone the running back position has you know we're we're here middle of the second round and it's already it's not looking exciting to me there's only really one or two running back names that i am excited about here aaron jones is the number one on that list sure someone might also say leonard fournette mike what are you thinking about with this pick so yeah i, I mark agree with andrews that, on the board it, mark andrews is interesting the, for the running backs though you know you're looking at Jones, the upside of Javante, who could smash, and then the the older guys of Leonard Fournette and James Conner, who like Fournette sure. and James Conner to me are very close together, but Conner is is lower ADP wise, especially what we're on sleeper right now, and make sure you are using the ADP to your advantage because it it infects people's brains. Um, so I'm actually looking like. I want to know what this team will look like if we went wide receiver, wide receiver, and is that like, CD Lamb for you? CD, yeah, it it is, and <laughs> CD Lamb is is so terrifying to me because I still can't figure out if I want to go all in or all out. Like I, uh, <laughs> there's no option of just being neutral. You, you no, either got to commit all the brain and all the heart and all the yes. soul to CD, or just say. Mm, I don't believe. <laughs> well, I mean, for for a player you're going to take in the middle of the second, yes, you need to be all in on that player. Um, I mean, I I just grabbed. I mean, the, the odds were nice, so I took Ceedee Lamb. It was like plus eighteen hundred, lead the league in receiving yards, because like that's something that could happen. I think so. It, and so, uh, you know, AJ Brown here not interesting to me. Keenan, not nice and safe, but the upside is just. Not that fantastic. So I I would take me, CeeDee Lamb here and see look and see what the team looks like. Can I throw one thing into the mix here? The only thought Jason's is that you could, face is freaking yeah, me out. I, I want to hear what he on? has to say. What I was gonna say is you could end up if you took Aaron Jones, 
there's a pretty good chance you get Aaron Jones and James Conner. Like Conner could come back around to you in the third round. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Those could be your two starting running backs potentially. Jason, what were you going to say? Yeah, when I when I look at the the running backs that are here available, the the ones that I like the most like a James Conner could potentially come back. Zeke could be there at, at our oh, next I'm, pick. And I'm in on Zeke. But I don't I, you but don't want to want to CD and No, 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 Zeke. you yeah. don't. But my point yeah. is there that running back isn't really the one I would pull the trigger on. So I'm fine going CD, but if this was just my pick, it would be Mark Andrews. I think okay. Mark Andrews should be the number one tight end taken. Uh, you know, you look last year, the success that people had drafting Kelsey in the first round. And now here we are in this, uh, you know, the the mid to back of the second. And my number one tight end is on the board. So that's the way I would go. But I'm fine going either way. It would be between CD and Mark Andrews. And this is the thing. We could really regret not going running back here. But there's a mock draft. This is why we do it. So that we can say, oh, what if we don't start with a running back in the first two rounds? How crappy will we feel at the end well we could find out yeah and i think we'll we'll do that let's take cd let's here do it i will say this we're at pick 20 in the draft the average draft position to mark andrews is 19 so he will be gone by the time uh it gets back to us and i want that because i don't want to be tempted to like really zero rb this thing uh cooper cup cd lamb we'll try that out and see what happens at running back saquon goes next mark andrews patrick mahomes that's the nice thing. You look at the draft when we were picking, you knew that probably one more wide receiver and probably one more tight end would go off and knock some of the running backs down the board. So Andrews and Mahomes go, Javante, Aaron Jones, <laughs> uh, A.J. Brown, Leonard Fournette, nice. Kyle Pitts, and then here we are with the opportunity. Like you said, we could take Zeke. We could take James Conner. James Conner is the clear highest running back left on the board for me. He's well ahead of... Uh, Zeke in my projections so being able to get him as your RB1 in the third I'm I'm are you in on that Mike with that do we make this uh, easy yeah oh yeah I'm in on on Connor there I just I the only thing I was gonna say is the I'm in on Zeke you know I still have Zeke as a top 10 guy I have Connor one spot ahead but also having the different guys on on different teams to boost that ceiling I would go Connor all right, so Cooper Cup, CeeDee Lamb, James Conner. We took him at 305 here. Um, I was going to ask if, you know, the Daryl Williams signing through any cold water on your excitement for Conner. To, I mean, you know, a little, a bit. little it, bit. It moved him down to my running back 10, um, but that's still a couple spots ahead of Zeke. All right, highlights after the James Conner pick. Mike Evans and then back-to-back -back tight ends, Kittle and Waller. Uh, then Keenan Allen, Antonio Gibson, Deontay Johnson, and David Montgomery rounding out the third round. T. Higgins, Zeke, Cam Akers, Justin Herbert, D.K. Metcalf, Josh Jacobs, and Terry McLaurin. We are back on the clock with options here uh, at the 408. You have uh, a number of wide receivers that, you know, Michael Pittman, I think, stands out as somebody Mike would probably highlight here. That is correct. Uh, D.J. Moore is there, Amari Cooper. Um, those are kind of the wide receiver highlights, Cortland Sutton, uh, Hollywood. At running back, J.K. Dobbins still on the board. Uh, he tends to go a little bit after Cam Akers. Both of those guys I see in the same category of interesting upside injury, um, those adjectives to describe them. And then you're moving into, look, Elijah Mitchell. We know the running game will be amazing in San Francisco. We just hope it's Elijah Mitchell. Uh, beyond that, Miles Sanders, who I know we are – Mike and I like, but probably not more than J.K. Dobbins here. Is J.K. Dobbins the pick? Yeah, can I, real quick, just a, an aside, I'm looking at something, and I've not seen this before. I'm looking at Ken Walker. I've seen oh, you Ken Walker. Seen it? I yeah. have not seen Ken Walker. I was like, who is Ken Walker? Wait. <laughs> Kenneth Walker the third. Have some respect. You know, he yeah. does, and he said he's Ken. Did he come out and say that? Did I miss I, this news? I believe I believe this is from him. Oh, I, I, I feel like Sleeper confirm. would would be would be all over that, right? Yeah, that's probably true. Deucers, so, look it up. I mean, why does get a Ken? Good... Why does Ken somehow seem almost more formal than Kenneth? <laughs> is it because of the Ken doll? Is it like he's oh. in his fancy suit? You got to dress him up, put him in his. You know, maybe know. you can get Ken doll at the beach. It doesn't always have to be fancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... 
Yeah, so when uh, to, to get back to the draft. Nice, nice transition. Thank you. To get back to the draft, I would agree both Mike and I are higher on Michael Pittman. That would probably be uh, the pick here. I like Waddle as well. The pick at wide receiver or the pick? The pick at wide receiver. Okay. But there are several here to me, even Cortland Sutton, Hollywood Brown, that I would be pretty happy with. At running back, you've got Dobbins, who I personally really like, and then there's a tear break. There is a huge tier. I love Brees Hall. I, if it was just me, I would take it. But I know you guys are afraid of uh, maybe the passing work and, and what Michael Carter does year one. Uh, the Jets offense, there's a bunch of question marks with Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Uh, Ken Walker, we don't even really know his name. So I would say <laughs> um, I would say we take J.K. Dobbins. That's what I would do. And Mike. then uh, if, if, we're, if we're my team, I would take Michael Pittman here because I like the uh, there's a string of wide receivers I like, and I think that Michael Pittman's a uh, top twelve guy. I mean, you, you, let, let me just tell you this though: I you can you can skip Pittman and come back to Mike Williams. You can skip Pittman and come back to Sutton. You can skip Pittman and come back to some other options, but you are going to have that tier break. So I would vote J.K. I, I would also say you could skip Pittman and maybe maybe go Pittman. He has a chance. To, <laughs> I'm saying he has a sure, chance to make it sure. back to us. J.K. Dobbins has no chance. He's, you know, in, in the sleeper ADP, he's the next running back up. So he's going to go when you've got eight picks between our next pick. When I, I mean, make you're, it, you're that confident? In Dobbins? In the, yeah. I am personally. I really believe that the, I mean, you, the Baltimore Ravens are going to run the ball, that he's going to be the lead dog, and that he's very, very talented. Oh, no, no. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying you're confident in the re injury recovery. Yes, yes, I am. It was a very straightforward ACL tear on a good timeline, and they're um, not rushing him. So I, I think he'll be good to go week one. The way I would right, look I'm at fine then. Go the decision between Dobbins and a wide receiver here is what do we have at wide receiver already? And from a reliability standpoint, Cup and Lamb are just foundational. So I feel like, you know, they're going to start for you every single week at wide receiver one and two cup lamb connor and dobbins that seems really good like i like that as a as my first four picks all right we're going to take a quick break and come back with our fifth pick we took jk dobbins i'll recap uh the picks after it in a moment uh <laughs> all right wow. pain yeah, one oh, pick. Oh, I see. I see what, why you guys are exclaiming that way. Um, J.K. Dobbins was our pick, and Michael Pittman almost made it back. Jerry Judy, Brees Hall, D.J. Moore, Amari Cooper, Jalen Waddle, Michael Thomas, Joe Burrow, and then Michael Pittman, one pick before us. Pain. Look, I, for me, I'm I'm much more in, especially in this situation, way more in on Mike Williams than Michael Pittman. Uh, when I have Cooper Cup and CeeDee Lamb, I want – that flex position at wide receiver to be the ability to win me a week. Michael Pittman really never did it at all last year. I mean, he had three games inside the top 15 on a weekly finish. So, again, I know we d disagree on that. I don't know where you have Pittman and Mike Williams. I imagine I, they're very I do close have, in I their have rankings. Williams, I do have Williams higher. Uh, Hollywood is there too right here, by the way. Hollywood is great, but we have James Conner. I don't think I yeah. want to go passing and running game so early, putting two-fifths of our uh, you know, first five picks into that camp. For me, when I look at Mike Williams, there's there are reasons to be afraid of Mike Williams' consistency and disappearing acts, but if you can have him as your wide receiver three, that's Behind the, Cooper Cup that's and yeah. CeeDee Lamb, there is no better spot yeah, for him to land it. than our team right now. <laughs> this is our moment. This, <laughs> this is our time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Cooper Cup, CeeDee Lamb, Mike Williams. That's our wide receiver core. Whew. James Conner, J.K. Dobbins. I mean, there there's some questions for both of those guys. Uh, Conner was – I mean, Conner is very much – the concerns for Connor should be the same concerns that we have for Najee in, in some capacity where um, the low yards per carry, um, the touchdowns are – it's going to come down to touchdowns for Connor. Oh, obviously, they if, will be there. Well, yeah. and, that, and that's really the story is you have an offense you're more confident with in Arizona and Kyler Murray than you do Najee on the goal line because of Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett, Correct. right? Yeah, and in the old uh, – Get it to the goal line. What should we do? Run it up the middle. So does that mean? Let me just tease this out, Mike. Does this mean that you would actually 
select James Conner over Najee Harris in a neutral situation? I mean, they're two rounds apart in ADP right here. I would you go? I mean, I I probably would. That's how I, I have it ranked. I have it ranked the the same. It, it sounds ridiculous, but if you think about it, last year you you had you had Chase Edmonds on the team. He he played most of the season, and Najee was the running back four. James Conner was the running back five. These guys were very similar, and if you project who's going to lose work coming this year, it it's Najee's passing work that probably will go away more than James Conner's. So. Um, yeah, the getting the the two round value I think is is a screaming deal. We do have confirmation, Jason. This is very important. Oh, good. I don't know what it is, but good. Um, <laughs> well, Kenneth Walker the third prefers to go by Ken, All even right. though he was listed as Kenneth during the draft. He is now Ken henceforth. Ken Walker. Well, here's what I know. I know that. Um, he will have now broken things for me on the back end of our website that I will have to fix. <laughs> because anytime players change their name, I have to go and make a oh, series yes. of changes because oh, thanks, man. Ken. All content creators know this pain. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I, and our programmers will soon. Um, after our Mike Williams pick, look, Mike, I, I'm, I'm drooling over some of our options at running back now. But after Mike Williams, some highlights. Sutton finally went at 507. Lamar goes off the board. In the fifth round as well, Godwin goes off the board in the fifth. That'll be very interesting where Chris Godwin ends up going because of what you know of him, and yet the injury recovery, I imagine, will be higher than this by the time the season begins. Kyler goes to start the sixth round. Finally, Elijah Mitchell off the board. And um, Ken Walker, of course, going at 6.07. Of course. You can see the draft board on YouTube for the other picks, but we're back on the clock. Miles Sanders is still there, somebody that I know Mike and I are both rising on. Yes, sir. You also have Cordero Patterson, who we talked about on the, the last week's show. Wow, car! Who has multiple position flexibility. Cordero finished at running back nine last year. He can be played at wide receiver or running back here on sleeper. And so he is on the board. I'm just bringing his name up. Hollywood still available. Brandon Cooks yep. still available. Who... You know, for me, this pick is probably between Miles Sanders and Brandon Cooks, to be honest. That's with exactly you. where I am, too. So, Jason, where, where would you go with our. We our... need running back more. I mean, that's the truth. Uh, that That is true. I mean, like, I, historically, I mean, Cooks can be a top 12 guy again. Yeah, Cooks could be a top 12 guy. Um, Hollywood, I have ranked the highest of any player left on the board. Um, personally, I like Kareem Hunt more than Miles Sanders. So, if this was my pick, it would be between Kareem Hunt and. And Hollywood wow, Brown, since really? you two are in sync, um, as opposed to insane, right? Or Backstreet, um, <laughs> I would I would say that you two should make the pick because you guys are between the same two players. I, you know, the fact that I'm Hunt and Hollywood, while both of you are Miles Sanders versus uh, Brandon Cooks, you guys should make this one. Mike, well, who who do you want here? I, I feel like the Dobbins yeah. variable at RB two. Like, I'm confident in Connor getting us points. Dobbins is the one where we don't know as of today whether or right. not he will be what Jason hopes he is or whether Gus will have a big role or the injury recovery. But I, I'm fine with either guy. It, I'm, I'm torn here because the positional need, you, you can never have enough running backs, especially starting running backs, um, and to have three on very high-scoring high offenses, high rush total offenses that would be a delight um you might be able to come back though and grab since we're at this pick you could come and back get, and end up with hunt patterson or even chase edmonds to sure. reinforce I mean, the I'm, running back i'm just i'm so much more confident in brandon cooks the the player davis mills is i think good enough and I like with i think we already have you know proof of concept that brandon cooks can get it done with with davis mills in houston they just gave him all the monies, and Brandon Cooks, Brandon Cooks just doesn't let you down. Like we all want, we all want to dismiss him, but he doesn't let you down for fantasy over the course of the season. And as much as I like Miles Sanders, that it, it's a projection. You know, I mean, him getting zero touchdowns last year is. Do you want to go Cooks, Mike? Is it sounds like you want to cook by the book. Yeah, I think I would I would take Brandon Cooks here. One thing uh, feather in the cap of that strategy would be 
look, Ken Walker just went, and I think that that is a mistake to take Ken Walker ahead of Rashad Penny, who I think will actually be the starter. Um, so my point is, yes, um, Miles Sanders won't be there for us, uh, but Penny is lower down the list and, and could be available. So we took Brandon Cooks. Let's give it a shot. Uh, Brandon Cooks here in the sixth round. Traylon Burks, Darnell Mooney, Miles Sanders does go. Jalen Hurts goes at six twelve. Jason's bargain of the draft at, at quarterback. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. I I would love to have Jalen Hurts. Uh, you know, around the the sixth seventh round, I think he's going to be a top five guy. Now I I know Jason always postures. See, I think I think what Jason did was he navigated very craftily. He gave us that pick because he knew that there was a pretty good chance we'd be battling him on this Cream Hunt take of his. Mm. And Cream Hunt's still available now. If it's me, it's Cordero. We've got you crazy. You got four wide receivers, two running backs. Cordero can play at both, but Jason knew that we'd have to give him this pick, Mike. And it is yeah, an easy. Diddy. It is an easy pick for me. <laughs> um, if I get this pick, it would be B Kareem Hunt. I think that he is one of the uh, best values in fantasy this year. I mean, you're you're talking. I about think a what you just said was my guy. I think that's what you said. He's uh, you really banging that drum. Wow. I hear you and Kyle, Mike. You haven't been at the office, and I don't know. I haven't involved myself in this conflict, but I have heard some raised voices. Yeah, uh, between Kyle the Borgogan and Jason, and Jason is flabbergasted at Kyle, and Kyle is flabbergasted at Jason. Neither of them can con just even comprehend each other's takes am i accurate I, in this no i i can comprehend i just i had respect for kyle i thought he was smart i <laughs> no. thought he was um capable as a fantasy analyst i i learned my lesson here this last week or two um i mean we he, have a moment can i can i hear just a brief like summation of the the two sides of this i mean we do have a judge it in the really house. comes to <laughs> no, the judge shares an if office he'll in handy. With, um, it does come in handy to have a judge in the house, but it really, really started as a feud over the contract situation for Kareem Hunt. He has zero dead cap. He can be completely cut for no money lost at all. And so Kyle uh, was highlighting a worry he had for my love of Kareem Hunt that there's some percentage chance they phase him out that he, that, that he's the just Ernest cut. just got no, paid. That, yeah, that he's cut or oh. traded. And and I have told him, now you're adding the or traded now. Stop it. You said there's it's, some percentage hey, chance no, he's cut. We're, and we're all have, just hearing this now, Jason. Yeah, this, this is, is all fresh brand new. I, <laughs> I have said that that is tomfoolery. Yes, he has zero dead cap, and there is no oh chance gosh. in the world he will be cut. I'm making an ironclad guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> ironclad guarantee. The, you dunk, are here. the boom shakalaka from Kyle. If that happens now, Kyle, do you? I mean, you're on microphone here. You can you can weigh in. What's your? Is that a fair summation of your opinion? I just think Jason is a disappointment to the show and his family for this take. Oh wow. my yeah. goodness! Yeah. Well, uh, it's an ironclad, locked and loaded guarantee. Jason Moore guarantee that Kareem Hunt is not cut. Um, it is a zero percent chance. No, of course not, because you're smart, Mike. Um, so, well, anyways, just, that doesn't make sense. None of this goes to Kareem Hunt's fantasy value. That's just a fun squabble we have. But I do think in the seventh round, you're getting a quality running back on a team whose offense might get a quarterback upgrade this year, and he's already been good for fantasy the last several times we've seen him on the field, and he's an injury away from being the number one. You know, like a top 10 guy. No, that's true. And um, I don't mind the pick. Thielen, Garrett Wilson, Cordero finally went. Tony Pollard at the end of the round. A couple more quarterbacks off the board and a bunch of wide receivers. Now, the one thing I like about our team right now, we're back on the clock in the eighth round. Is, is that we, we can't draft Zach Ertz? Well, that's see, Mike, that's good for you. Yes, uh, Zach Ertz went. It's good for my soul. Yes, the fact that he – because the perfect thing to happen for our show would be Zach to just keep dropping and dropping, <laughs> and Mike is just up against it again. I mean – Dude, if he's there at 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> there is not a 0% chance that you actually contracted coronavirus from your Zach Ertz take <laughs> on the show last week. It weakened, it weakened, it weakened your, so much. <laughs> your immune system was <laughs> devastated – Due to the stress hormones emitted from that choice. Um, what I was going to say about our wide receivers is I don't think we have to take another one the rest of the draft. That's how strong they are. Cooper Cup, CeeDee Lamb, Mike Williams, Brandon Cooks. From a solidity standpoint, from an upside standpoint, 
not saying we won't. I'm saying we don't have to, which gives us tons of flexibility for the positions we need. There's only four left anyway. We're sitting here. Rashad Penny's on the board. Still, he's the locked in pick here for me because you really? could end up. Yeah, because you could end up starting him over J.K. Dobbins week one. I mean, there is a world where that's true, or week two, and you see that he's got a stranglehold on the backfield. It is not often you have a chance to have maybe the one on a run first team. Like, yeah, he's he is in strong consideration. I wrote sure. down three names okay. that I would be between. How big is the font? It's just normal font. We're in the we're in the eighth <laughs> round. This okay, is just eighth round font. font. Gotcha. Eighth round font. Um, I've got Penny as one of those three, but it's between Penny. Chase Edmonds and and Melvin Gordon is more of like a look for him later type of player. To me, it's between Rashad Penny, who we've seen dominate whenever he's been given the chance. He's just not been healthy. Um, granted, he lost his quarterback, so now there's questions with that. And they bring in Ken Walker, so there's questions with that. And then Chase Edmonds, who could be part of a good offense, maybe if Tua can get it done with Tyreek and they paid him money. And so it's between those two f for me. Uh, obviously, our team could use another running back. We're going to have to take a tight end and a quarterback sometime in the next four picks. So, so we, we have to do it. Just throwing it out there, reminding you. Right now, I don't see a reason to do it <laughs> at the tight end position. I mean, Dawson Knox is there if you wanted a piece of a good offense. Beyond that, it's going to be you know, the the bottom of the tight end barrel projecting a uh, Gesicki, uh, Guavinam, Gronkowski. I, I'd be willing to take that shot. It's looking more like he's coming back. Cole Komet. Irv Smith. Like Gronk is a if, – if we think Gronk's coming back. Yeah, just grab him with our last pick. He just seems like such a smart selection because, you know, you're talking about Russell Gage. This is the conversation around the important pieces of this offense is Russell Gage. No disrespect to Russell Gage, but Gronk is going to take your targets. So let's talk about this real quick, because I think a lot of listeners might be saying, well, Dawson Knox is clearly who we should be grabbing here. He has high uh, touchdown upside. You know, he's got Josh Allen, and, and there is an argument for that. But if if you're telling the last pick, the, the, you could go four more rounds past this draft, and you could still take a last pick on someone like Gerald Everett who could be a high touchdown guy for for uh, Big Herb um, in his new contract, you know, playing for the uh, Chargers. And so I don't think that the difference there is that large, but the difference between these running backs in this eighth round and who you're going to get in the last pick of the draft is going to be monumental. So I would I would steer towards running back. Yeah, I think <laughs> so I'm going to take Penny, Mike. You going to be okay uh, with that? I, I, I will be okay taking Rashad Penny here because he's the starter but I am shocked because the Jason's the one who beats the drum like you guys were talking all about the Buffalo offense and Gabe Davis was available in the back of the eighth round and that, that's who I would have taken if it were my team I didn't and look Jason's at wide receiver says, <laughs> Jason's oh, face says he screwed up he's so good <laughs> Thank you, Mike, for at least calling out my issue. I mean, the the truth is, I feel is, like I've got to like. Can we put like a formal, like long form disclaimer that scrolls on the screen every time Jason brings up Gabe Davis? I didn't bring him up. To be fair, Mike. Brought no, him he up. he. Like, Your quote and, and the analysis in this was spectacular. Was he's so good? Yeah, you're back there. You're back there. <laughs> yeah, I've I've been I've I've been pretty firmly back in place for a few. I mean, a couple weeks. Like yeah. we took Penny there. And Such wide a better receivers. pick for our team. You're not starting Gabe Davis over these four wide receivers anytime soon. It's true. Oh, I I, I understand, but Elijah Moore, Lockett, Alave, Robert Woods, and then Gabe Davis went before we went back up. It's like, oh man, I would much rather take Gabe Gabe Davis over those guys. I understand that in a vacuum at wide receiver. Yeah, I, not I, on our team. Yeah, this is where the team context does matter, and I I could see even having known Gabe Davis was there to, you know, be convinced that the running back was better for our roster construction. Here we are, we're back up. You've still got Melvin Gordon available, but we should at least peek at the it's, quarterbacks. It's Aaron Rodgers here for me. That's the pick. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is that the quarterbacks available? Um, we're in the ninth round. We obviously have to have one. Aaron Rodgers is available. Uh, Kirk Cousins is available. There, there really is a tear break from those two. Uh, it, tr Trey Lance yeah. also available. And come on now, look if you're swinging for the <laughs> if you're swinging for the fences. Same disclaimer. It, we, we need the, we need something that uh, 
comes up on the board with Trey Lance and Gabe Davis. Yeah, so my rankings personally go Kirk Cousins, Aaron Rodgers, and Trey Lance in that order. Uh, I am fine taking any one of those three. If you want Kirk, we should wait on him. Sure. Um, and Mike, I, am I right to assume you would just slam Trey Lance here? That it. <laughs> I would draft Is that like a Trey drink? Lance. You would you slam an the energy draft drink? button yes. on yes. Trey Lance. Um, so if you guys have a different opinion at quarterback than Aaron Rodgers and we are all on different pages, uh, then we should not take one. We should wait another round and just let the draft come to us. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like between our next pick, there is only one team that does not yet have a quarterback. That doesn't mean that teams Some can't QB take multiple quarterbacks. I would board. I'd probably take Gronk right now. I don't know if he'll come back. You don't mm. think Gronk will come back? Uh, we have a, we have our long wait, and to me, the rest are just garbage shots in the dark. So yeah. Gronk, Gronk can be. I mean, uh, uh, last year points per game, he was a oh, difference making tight end. So to me, can I get a difference maker in the ninth round, or am I taking another shot at a running back or wide receiver? I'm not playing for the first while. I mean, I that's the way I'd lean, but completely understand that logic. If it was my pick, I think I would go Melvin Gordon here for more uh, running back depth for our roster. Here, but I'll, I'll make you a deal. I'll make you a deal. Andy. Oh, this is a Trey Lance trade. Oh yeah. No, no, this is not a Trey Lance trade. This is if you are selecting Aaron Rodgers here, then when it, when the when the when it comes back to us, you know, Christian we Watson. Should, no, we should grab his true number one wide receiver, Alan Lazard. And get that that stack. I thought you meant Sammy Watkins because that's oh, probably no. the true number one. No, it is Christian not Watson. It's not Watson. It's it's probably Lazard. Sammy. It's not probably. Wait, Sammy. who? It's so Lazard. real quick, just this is a fun experiment. Mike, you believe that the number one fantasy wide receiver at the end of this season will be Alan Lazard for the Green Bay Packers? That is correct. Andy, who do you think it will be? Not Sam, necessarily Sammy Watkins. I think I'm in the Sammy Watkins camp Fantasy right now. Fantasy points, well, I think it'll be Watkins. Which is not a place I like to be. No, and I'm not saying that that number will be extremely high either. So, yeah. Alan Lazard needs to show up to camp for us to pick him, Mike. Sorry. Oh, I, I understand. But he's going to get a deal. We, we have to pick somebody to, to be on our team. All right. Trey Lance, you got it. You can get him later. <laughs> you can, can get him later. Yeah, of course you can. All right. Well, then let's do that. Then you you want Trey Lance later? Yeah. Let's get Trey. Let's tr draft either Gronk or Melvin Gordon here. Let's take Gronk. Okay. And then um, and then uh, we'll come back. Rogers went. Now, if we grab Lazard, we could have two players that aren't currently playing football in Gronk and Alan Lazard. I'm sorry that Melvin Gordon went and Trey Lance also went. <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You know nothing about this draft. Well, I yeah. He went as a second quarterback. Sorry, yeah. Mike. I didn't because expect the perfection. second quarterback to go off the board. For the Lamar Jackson manager, this was the second quarterback off the board. I apologize. It's I'm sorry fun. you didn't get your guy, but Kirk Cousins is there, yeah. and we should take him now. Kirk Cousins was the quarterback Sweet. 11 last year. Kirk Cousins was the quarterback 11 the year before. Mike just said, <laughs> Mike just said the most true Kirk Cousins. Exp <laughs> Look, there's some hope, Mike. We have a new offensive genius in Minnesota who's going to do some things with Kirk Cousins. Oh, I mean, I get it. But if we're talking about difference makers, Kirk Cousins does not make a difference. I agree. We should have taken Trey, <laughs> Trey Lance there and just taken the shot on him. Um, unfortunately, I was going to take Lazard as a like penance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. he, he went two picks ahead. Yeah, because Team 3 knows what they're doing. So he's he's gone. So I've ruined both of you. No Melvin Gordon, no Trey Lance. Yeah, but at least but Jason we have a tight gets Kirk Cousins. Not, who does not have a contract? That's okay though. I mean, we're in the ninth <laughs> round. He may be. He may be a difference maker. Yeah, no, now, I, I, I don't disagree. Now, Mike, make make the final pick. You and Jason oh, make sweet. the final pick. <laughs> what do we got here? Let's see. There's a couple names that are interesting. Christian Kirk is there. Uh, Mark Marquez Valdez Scantling and wild card you talked about last week that could be the number one. You got Tim Patrick. Both of those guys with good quarterbacks. You could take Jameis Winston, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> really swing for the fences. Um, Rashad White, rookie running back for uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, is available as well. You could take Chuba Hubbard, Mike. Oh, man. You this get is, to pick this, Mike. This, this is, is all you. This so is just you. At me. the end of this draft, we're going to look back and say, man, how did Mike do with that last pick? <laughs> I'm very uh, curious. All right. Uh, 
Well, let, let's let's at least let's let's uh, Russell Gage. Yep, that's where I was going to go. I was like, let's respect this man that we talked about in the news, Russell okay. Gage. All right, our final team, Jason. You want to run it back? Sure thing. Last our, on our team, first onto the waiver wire. Our wide receiver <laughs> core is Cooper Cup, C.D. Lamb, Mike Williams, Brandon Cooks, and Russell Gage. We have a four pack of running backs with James Conner, J.K. Dobbins, Kareem Hunt, and Rashad Penny, Gronk, and Kirk Cousins. This is obviously a shallower bench. We only drafted four bench players here, so we, you know, in a in a in a normal home league draft you're probably going to have another two players maybe a kicker get those out of your league and a defense um we're not wanting to waste your time too much with that but draft the browns um when you are drafting a defense because they get off to such a good opening schedule and nobody is really going hard after the browns until now right well i'm not telling you to go hard i'm just saying grab them they'll be cheap all right uh any other thoughts mike on that draft or any huge regrets I mean, we were looking so good through six rounds, and then, then we kind of the Kareem Hunt thing really yeah. just disrupted the rest of the draft. It really Kyle did. agrees. We were looking great through seven rounds, Mike. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I I actually think our team is is pretty good. If we could go back and undo picks, the one that I would undo would be the Gronk pick. Just take and Melvin I would, Gordon there. I would probably take Trey Lance there. I I think that looking at me, like Trey Lance was the lowest of my ranks. Looking in, at me? In quarterbacks. <laughs> I, I pivoted thoughts. Um, you know, I, I said After that jets. my rankings were Kirk Cousins, Aaron Rodgers, Trey Lance. But when you leave a draft and you think, like, who has the potential to really explode? We know it's not Kirk Cousins. No, he's it could soft, be. It could he's be. safe. No. I don't think Kirk Cousins has top five in his. Maybe not top five. Yeah. But, and, I mean, close to that. I mean, you are getting a, a completely rebuilt offense with one of the best offensive, you know, Groups of weapons. I think there's a small chance that that happens. Yeah, there is a small chance he throws enough touchdowns to get there. But the, without his, without rushing, it's so hard for quarterbacks to get there unless they're throwing forty plus. I touchdowns. don't disagree. Maybe maybe Lance was the right pick there, Mike. Okay, I accept. You should have really. I really pushed, feel like pushed a little harder. He did not. He does <laughs> he not did. like Lance because he really didn't. He didn't push stand hard up for him at no, all. No, Mike is I, out on I Trey Lance. It was an impossibility. You Trey Lance haters. Well, I mean, I we mean, just look, talked about we could have taken him, but we, nobody. We both wanted to. Nobody talked us into it, Mike. Yeah, we both were really pretty, pretty gung ho. Yeah, I wanted maybe, him. Maybe next time. All right, that is going to do it for today's <laughs> episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Feel free to share your comments with us. Um, you know, when Gronkowski eventually signs, we'll feel better about the pick, right? I, Certainly. I, yeah. I mean, oh yeah. We will, <laughs> we will definitely feel better about drafting him when he plays football. All right. Well, that'll do it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Excited for this live show in Detroit tomorrow. It's going to be a blast. Yes. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.